Hello again. This is going to be a basic guide on how to add a custom item into the game. It would have been a lot harder for me to figure out a lot of these steps without using the wiki that has been created for the modding community, so I'll link that below. There is a lot of good information from some really smart creators there, and it should only keep growing. To start, we'll need a few more tools. I'll put all of these links in the description again. First, UtinyRipper will allow us to convert our game directory into a Unity project where we will have access to existing assets and be able to build our own custom versions. To support that, we'll also need to get Unity Hub and add a free personal license. We'll then need to download Unity 2019.4.20, which you can get here with the Unity Hub download link after it is installed. After installing these tools, open up UtinyRipper and you should see this screen. You need to drag your entire game directory in here. After doing so, your window should look like this. Click Export, then pick somewhere to save your project. After the process is complete, you should have a folder called Valheim that contains assets and project settings. Since this is a long process, I would recommend copying this directory somewhere else to work in case you need to use the clean export again later. After choosing a working directory, copy the path to the folder containing the Valheim export. Open Unity Hub, select Add. Go to the path of your export, select the Valheim folder, and click Select Folder. You should see a project get loaded with Unity version 2017. Change the version to 2019.4.20. Then click the project. We'll need to upgrade, so select Confirm. This process will take a minute. After the upgrade is complete, your project should look something like this. We are going to add a new version of the Iron Sword, so let's find that prefab. You'll see that the sword loaded without textures. This is a problem with the Ripper export that can be easily fixed. Select Edit, Project Settings, Graphics, then scroll down and find the Deferred Shader setting. Change this from Custom Shader to Built-in Shader. Close the window. Additionally, some items don't load the mesh correctly. To fix this, select Viking Sword under Attach and change the shader to Standard. You should then be able to see the Iron Sword. To make our version, we're going to add a new folder to Assets called Custom Items. Return to the prefab for the sword. Press Control D or go to Edit and select Duplicate. Then drag the duplicate into your custom items folder. From here, we can rename the sword to anything we want. Generally, you would edit the prefab further at this point, but since this is a sample, I'm just going to leave it as is. Before we can export our item, we need to fix how the scripts are referenced. Since Valheim uses a number of assemblies, we need to go into each folder, right-click, and create a new assembly definition. Name the definition the same name as the folder.
After you have created an assembly definition in each folder, you need to link them together to get rid of these compilation errors. To do so, click the assembly definition and add new references until the references are fixed. You can do this by hitting this button and picking whichever references you need to repair. As far as I can tell, the assembly references only need to be added to the assembly Valheim assembly definition in this manner. You may need to add some references to the other definitions if you have further issues. After fixing the script references, we are ready to build an asset bundle. Go to Window, Package Manager, and find Asset Bundle Browser. Install this package. Close this window, and you are ready to add your item to the package. Click on all of the items you want to be in your bundle. Select None next to Asset Bundle, New, and name your bundle. After you are done with this, go to Window, select Asset Bundle Browser. You should see your created bundle. To build this bundle, click Build, and then Build. Navigate to this directory in reference to your Unity project. You should see your exported bundle. Similar to the previous video, I've made a new project and now I'll explain the code. Before we start, we need to add a few things to the project. First, there are two new references that you need to add on top of the previous references. The first is simply a reference to the Assembly Utils DLL, which is alongside the Assembly Valheim DLL. The second is a reference to your Unity Engine Asset Bundle module. Unfortunately, the version shipped with the game is not complete enough for our purposes. To get the complete version, you can load it from your Unity installation. Your installation path should look something like this, and I will paste this below in the description. The module you need is this Asset Bundle module DLL here. After adding these modules, you also need to add your asset bundle to the project. To do so, right-click on the project and explore it in File Explorer. Navigate to where you exported your bundle earlier. Copy it, paste it into your project directory. Return to Visual Studio, right-click on your project, go to Add, Existing Item, change to all files. Click on your asset bundle and add it to the project. Finally, click the bundle and change its build action to embedded resource. This will cause the asset bundle to be injected into the DLL. Going through the code, we need to add a new step to the awake function which loads in the asset bundle. To do this, we've created a method that finds the manifest resource by file name, loads it into a stream, and then loads an asset bundle from that stream. After getting the asset bundle, we can load our specific game object by loading asset with the resources path inside the bundle. This corresponds to the path in your Unity project. Once the game object is loaded, you need to patch it into two areas. The first is ZNAT Scene Prefabs, and the second is the object DB. 
For a ZNet scene, we use an awake patch to add the example sword to the prefabs. For object DB, we need to target awake and copy other DB. I've created a helper method here that checks if the object DB instance has been initialized, then adds the example sword to the instance's items list. With these patches in place, next time you load the game, your item should be able to be spawned. In game, we can open Unity Explorer, inspect the game main object, open the object DB, go to fields, open the M items list, find our item. It should be at the end of the list. To further confirm that our item is in the game, we can open the console, enable cheats, and spawn our item into the game. Since we didn't modify the prefab at all, it is still named Iron Sword. However, if we go into Unity Explorer again, enable Mouse Inspect, hover over the sword, we can see that it is indeed an instance of our example sword. I wanted to keep this initial guide basic, but the wiki has more detailed information, and I'm also going to try to add additional projects and potentially make more guides to show other options in importing items, creating recipes, and adding additional status effects. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and have a good one.